Hey everyone, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Adelina and I make videos about living in my tiny house on wheels and living a more intentional life. So today's video is an update video. I made the first working from home in my tiny house video almost a year ago, just after the pandemic hit. And I have now been working in my tiny house full time for almost a year. And I thought it would be interesting for me and perhaps for you to sort of get a feel for what it's been like, what has worked, what's been a challenge, and uh, basically also a recap on my setup and what you might want to consider when you're deciding on your tiny house design and whether or not you want a home office in that. So if that is of interest to you, stay tuned. So the first thing I just wanted to go over was my setup. When I was designing my tiny house, I had three priorities. Um, one of those was a dedicated space to work from home. Um, I had obviously watched a lot of tiny house videos and looked at a lot of different designs. And what was not going to work for me was a home office space that was part of my regular everyday living space and one that I had to fully disassemble and put away every night. It wasn't gonna work for me. I didn't wanna have my laptop, my chargers, everything on my countertop. So I wanted to be sure to build in a dedicated workspace that was tucked out of the way. Now I have gone nine and a half feet wide for my trailer, which means that I have an extra foot of width in my tiny house. And that makes a big difference. I knew that doing that would allow me to have a dedicated workspace, storage space for my files and printer, etc. So my desk here is set right under this window. It doesn't open, but I'm really glad I have this window here because it allows a ton of light in, as you can see. It allows me to watch the birds at the bird feeder, see the blue sky when it shows up. It really makes a big difference. It makes it feel so much more open and I don't feel claustrophobic or anything like that when I'm sitting at my desk. So what are the dimensions of my desk? My desk is 18 inches deep from the wall to the edge of the desk. And when I was doing the design with my builder, what I actually did was grab my measuring tape every time we had a Zoom call to uh, discuss the design and the layout and make changes. And she would send me a draft of a floor plan and I would go through it. And I actually would grab my measuring tape, sorry if that's loud, and uh, lay that out and decide whether or not that was going to be enough room. And one of the things I realized was 18 inches wasn't going to be enough room for me to have my keyboard, my monitor, my laptop set up and still have room for files and my notebook and things like that. So what we came up with was this additional little flip up space that has little sliders underneath. And this is an extra five inches. And that makes a big difference for me because it's out when I need it. It gets folded up when I don't. And so it's not always in the way, but it's there for when I'm working. And again, that is such a, like a clever thing. I'm not clever. It's just a clever idea. Uh, and I really, really like that. I also decided to go 42 inches deep for my desk. Because again, I knew that I wanted to have a monitor as well as my laptop. And so I wanted enough room for those things without being crept. What I found is, and you'll see from the video that I'm about to show of sort of the typical day of working from home, um, that I have a little box with the files that I'm working in, a little file box that have, with the files that I'm working in right now. And what I do is I pull that out and I set it on one of my stools right here so that it's easily accessible but it's not on my desktop. It gives me that extra space that I really find useful. And that's something that I didn't know I would need, but I'm glad I didn't actually build in because I can just slide this stool over when I need it. And then it, it has its own purpose when I don't need it. Because I went extra wide, this hallway here, that was one of my considerations. I wanted a pantry uh, here and my fridge is right here, but I still obviously wanted to be able to walk through here when I was working, even with the flip up up. So this hallway with this closed is 27 inches. So just over two feet. 
and when it's open it's 22 inches so still enough room for me to, or somebody else to walk behind me when I'm sitting at my desk here um, and again if I hadn't done that if I hadn't gone that extra foot wide I wouldn't have been able to accommodate this extra space here um, or this flip up I don't think and that has been really something that I like So what are the considerations that you should have in your mind when you're deciding on um, a space for working from home in your tiny house? Well, I think the, obviously the most important consideration is, are you working from home full time or is it just a part time thing? Prior to the pandemic, I worked from home three days a week and would still go into the office downtown here in Calgary two days a week. Then the pandemic hit a year ago and everybody, that could here in Calgary, everybody that could was was asked was mandated to work from home during that first lockdown. My company, which is a big company, an international company, we went work from home uh, right away, and they made it pretty much permanent for the duration. They've told us that we won't be allowed back into the office until at least September, at the earliest of 2021. However, I've been moved to a teleworker status, so I won't be going back into the office. Yay. <laughs> Not that I don't love my coworkers. It's just that I really find it distracting to work in the office. And the reason is because it's an open plat office and uh, I'm an introvert. And so all of that activity and noise and talking around me tends to uh, make it more difficult for me to concentrate. Anyways, so your first consideration when you're deciding on your work from home layout is how many days a week am I working from home? If you're only working from home occasionally or one day a week, it might be totally practical for you to just set up your laptop at the place where you eat or on your counter and have it like a stand up situation or even to sit at your couch on your couch with your laptop on your lap. But if you're working from home full time, you're going to want a more permanent, stable solution because it's really important in order to have a healthy workspace that is functional for you, you know, physically and also mentally, you're a separation. For me, it was very, very important. So having a dedicated workspace meant that I could literally uh, leave work at the end of each day and especially on a Friday at the end of the work week and then be in my, you know, private life and having a dedicated space allowed me to do that because I, I don't use this for anything else. I thought I might use it to eat, but I literally don't. I only use this to work. Another thing you want to think about is how much room do you need? How much equipment or, or electronics are you going to have to use for work? So for me, I have my laptop, which I'm lucky opens up flat so I can stand it up on a stand and use it as a monitor. And I have a monitor and then I have my wireless keyboard and mouse. So I don't have a ton, but I have, you know, at least three pieces, four pieces that I need on this workspace, which meant that I wanted the width and the depth to fit that. And then my papers, my files, my notebooks. If you do other type of work where you have a lot of other equipment or materials that you're using, this might not be enough space. And then you're going to want to be sure that wherever you set up your 
workspace that you have the proper plugins so that you can plug in your electronics. The one regret I have is that the plugins that are here are not USB plugins. They don't have the USB slots as well. And that was uh, a little short sighted on both myself and my builders part because some, one of us should have thought of that. I've got this that I bought at Ikea that's got three USB ports in there. And what that lets me do is plug in more things that need that are USB. So I have my charger for my phone and the charger for my um, little speaker here that I use to listen to music or podcasts. And there's a plug up here that I plug my monitor and everything into. There's also a plug underneath the desk and I bring up the cords for my printer and my monitor and my laptop charger through here. Just keep in mind that I could have probably used an extra plug underneath the desk and I certainly wish that the plugs above the desk were USB plugs as well. You're also going to want to take into account what other equipment you might need. Stuff that's not on your desk such as a printer, a shredder, any of those other things, a scanner. I started this process of working from home in the tiny house with my own sort of personal printer that I had bought. And then when I was made a teleworker, the company sent me a full-size printer and a shredder. Now the full-size printer is quite large and <laughs> I'm really, really, really grateful. Let me slide this over so you can see that the, pr that the builder built this space big enough for this Hewonkin printer. And that is a technical term in case you're wondering. So that actually worked out. When I first got that box by Courier, I was a little freaked out because I it was huge, but of course it's packed in all this extra packing and styrofoam and things like that. So thank goodness it actually fit in that space because I was thinking, where am I gonna put this sucker? It has to be close to my desk. And I also got a shredder. Now that I put up in my loft and once a week, once every couple of days, I will take the papers that I don't need and I will t I'll just crawl up into the loft, plug my shredder in and shred them up there. You might need either more than one computer, more than one dedicated monitor, and you're definitely gonna wanna think about that if you're working from home in your tiny house. It's really a matter of deciding what your priorities are. If your priority is to have, uh, to work from home in a tiny house, it's worth it to dedicate space to that. Yes, it means you're taking away space from something else, but it's definitely worth it. So that actually brings me to the next topic, which is challenges. Now that I've been here in my tiny house working full time for about a year, there have been challenges. Absolutely. The first one and the one that I didn't really think about, I mean, I thought about it. I thought about my placement and I knew that I would have these cupboards right behind me. And because I, we do Zoom calls and we did before the pandemic. I knew that I wanted to have my camera uh, background be something that was neutral. So this is perfect, these, these cupboards here are perfect. The thing is that I have to be very, very careful about my camera placement. So I always turn on my Zoom prior to a meeting, even if I'm going on somebody else's Zoom call and check where my camera placement is because if it's just, a fraction, a centimeter too far this way, people can see in my kitchen. If it's a centimeter too far this way, people can see into the bathroom. <laughs> and that is not what I want. I want them to think I'm in my home office, but I don't want them to see my personal space. So I have to be very, very careful about that. Um, and I have actually just recently ordered a fold out green screen for when I'm doing meetings. That way I can use the backgrounds that are provided by my company that show sort of an office space behind me. Because if you don't have a green screen, they don't work that well. They're there, but they don't work that well. And so a green screen will make that a lot easier. And I just thought, you know what? It's time to just buy one of those. I can expense it. So it's not a personal cost to me, but that is a consideration. So remember, if you're building a space to work from home, pay attention to what's gonna be behind you when you're doing meetings, if you do meetings, because uh, that's gonna matter. To go along with the whole Zoom call topic, the thing about working in a tiny house, the thing that I have found is because it's such a small space and I am, I mean, it's basically one big room, 
your sounds can become part of your meeting. So right now, Sophie's just crawled into her litter box and she's going to dig away at, at her litter because that's what she does. She'll sometimes sit and have, go over and have some of her growlies out of her food bowl. And you can hear that. If she's meowing, you can hear that. When the furnace kicks in, you can hear that. So it's one of those things that you don't think about, but you have to take into consideration when you're working in a tiny house. And so what I do is I just put headphones on and I put these on and when I put these on none of those sounds can be heard by the participants on the zoom call so I would definitely take that into consideration you really can't help it so it's not something that you probably can avoid but it's something that you have to just think about and obviously something as simple and inexpensive as headphones can make all the difference two of the biggest challenges in the last year of working from home in the tiny house have been uh, this feeling of isolation now I'm an introvert. I'm an outgoing introvert, but I'm an introvert, which means that I get my energy. I get recharged by alone time. And my preferred method of uh, socializing is, you know, one-on-ones or very small groups. But when you work from home during a pandemic, you actually see nobody. <laughs> I mean, when the Amazon delivery guy comes, it's like, hi. <laughs> It's one of those things that everybody's experiencing, whether you're living in a tiny house or a regular house. And certainly when, you know, you're working from home full time and you're in a tiny house on wheels and it's just you, that's, that's something that you're going to experience and certainly one that I've experienced and had a bit of a struggle with over this last year. But I do believe that that is just due to Corona Geddon. So working from home per se, doesn't bother me because I'm the type of person that likes a lot of alone time and I don't have any problems with distractions being at home. I don't have to worry about, you know, the dishes distracting me or the laundry dist distracting me. My personality type, I don't have that problem. I'm not easily distracted by those things so I can really focus, which leads me to my second and sort of last challenge is the fact that, um, over time in this last year, I've slipped more and more into uh, working longer because I'm here. So now I don't have to get up on the days when I would go downtown and warm up my car, scrape it off, drive to the train station, take the train downtown and try to get to work for eight o'clock. I get up just after six, even with feeding the cat and making my coffee and making my bed and all of those things. It's seven o'clock and I'm standing here going, okay, well, I might as well get started, right? I'll just read a few emails. I won't actually log on. Well, before you know it, you are. And so I've started to find that, that I was logging on earlier. And then also at the end of the day, I normally work eight to four. Uh, I would be thinking, well, I'll just finish one last thing. I'll just finish one last thing. And before I knew it was 4.15, 4.30, 5 o'clock. One of the things that I'm really working on is making sure that I don't let that creep become even more. I don't mind logging on a little earlier because I find that I can get rid, I can take care of the emails, but I find that the working later is really not good for me mentally. I need to have that separation and that's something that I'm really working on. Those are really the challenges that I've had in working from home in the tiny house. Um, but there have been a lot of pluses in working from home. One of the big pluses of working from home this last year has been this little critter here, Sophie. I, I mean, it's been really nice to be able to have my cat on my lap while I'm working. I mean, she's fluffy. So sometimes it's a little harder to get closer to my laptop. <laughs> when she's sitting on my lap. So, you know, I don't let her do it all the time, but having her here has made this whole thing a lot less lonely. I mean, I think, I think our relationship has grown since the pandemic started. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Anyways, having Soph around has been nice and uh, being able to cuddle with her has been a bonus, especially during the winter when it was cold and dark. The coffee is better at my house than at the office. That's for darn sure. And so are the snacks. I can actually make a hot lunch. I can cook something, which has been nice. I also obviously love the fact that I can move my tiny house and work from anywhere. Now that I'm a teleworker, I don't have to be in Calgary. 
and I don't intend to be in Calgary forever. So once when my tiny house moves, all I need is a strong internet connection and I can work from anywhere. The type of work that I do, I can do from anywhere. I'm really glad that I planned ahead. Your goal is to give yourself options when you're designing your tiny house. Because I put a loft in, even though I don't really use it, I now have a space for that shredder and I could put other work-related things up there, storage and things like that. Because I knew that I wanted uh, a desk, a dedicated office space in my tiny house, that really sort of led my decision to go wider so that I had space, but it wasn't feeling cramped and I didn't feel like I was um, intruding into my regular living space for my desk space. It's important to be thinking about those things as you're designing your tiny house. Decide what your priorities are. If one of those is working from home, then make sure that you are taking into account how much space you need, the type of work you, you do, the kind of equipment or electronics that you're going to need to have close to your workspace, uh, you know, electrical plugins, USB ports, things like that. And I would really, you know, my big number one sort of recommendation here is put your workspace near a window. You don't want to be tucked under the stairs or something like that for full-time work. That's fine for occasional work. It's really important to think of your peace of mind and your mental uh, sort of health as well. Honestly, being able to see the birds, being able to see that one squirrel that just <laughs> does goes through contortions to, and gymnastics to try and get to the bird seed. I just, I just want to applaud her every time she shows up. But those are the things that make me smile throughout the day. It also gives me something to focus my eyes on outside of my laptop and my monitor so that that's good for my eyes. It's just all around a really good thing and a good idea. And if it's at all possible, that's a big recommendation that I would make is to have some natural light next to your workspace if you can. So that's the video. I hope that was helpful. Uh, and if you are designing your own tiny house right now and have other ideas that I didn't think of, I would love for you to share them down below. What works for me might not work for you. If you've been working from home, I would love to know what your experiences have been, what your challenges have been, and what things have really worked out for you because I think that would be really interesting to hear. Please don't forget to subscribe. I say this every single time, but the majority of my viewers are not subscribers. And if you subscribe, it lets YouTube know that the videos are of value and then it recommends them to more people. And also it means that you get to be part of this community and you guys are amazing. It's a supportive, uplifting, just really great community. And I really, really appreciate you all. So if you can subscribe and click the little bell notification button, because apparently that's important too. Thanks for watching. I love you guys. I hope you're doing well and hopefully spring is coming soon. So I'll see you next week.